Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! The Embassy of Saudi Arabia in the United Kingdom has released a statement in which it rejects any form of interference in its internal affairs regarding Ali Mohammed al namir the activist sentenced to death by beheading in Saudi Arabia. In my interview with the Prime Minister earlier this week, he said he would personally raise the case if he had the opportunity. In a moment, my interview with the father of Ali Mohammed al namir who has told me that there are now seven other young men who face the death penalty. But first, our foreign affairs correspondent Jonathan Rugman has this. Ali Mohammed al nimr could be killed at any time. His body then put on display for alleged crimes committed when he was just 17. He'd taken part in Shia protests in the eastern city of Katif in 2011. He was arrested the next year, found guilty of breaking his allegiance to the king, chanting against the state and using his mobile phone to incite riot. Though the real cause of his death sentence may be that he's the nephew of this outspoken cleric, Nimr al-Nimr, a leading opponent of the Saudi monarchy who's also been sentenced to death. In his first conference speech as Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn asked the Prime Minister to intercede. Intervene now, personally, with the Saudi Arabian regime to stop the beheading and crucifixion of Ali Mohammed al namar and it was an issue we also raised with David Cameron this week. Well, we have raised this as a government, yes. Have you personally? Uh, I, no, the Foreign Secretary has raised this, our embassy has raised this. We raised this in the, in the proper way. Uh, I'll look to see if there's an opportunity for me to raise it as well. I can think of one occasion since I've been Prime Minister where, you know, a bomb that would have you know, potentially blown up over Britain was stopped because of intelligence we got from Saudi Arabia. So, of course, it'd be easier for me to come on your programme and say, well, I'm not having anything to do with these people, it's all terribly difficult, etc., etc. For me, Britain's national security and our people's national security comes first. Saudi Arabia is Britain's biggest arms market. The RAF diverting its bombs to the Saudi Air Force, which is at war in Syria and Yemen. Only yesterday, Amnesty International accused the Saudis of war crimes in Yemen. Over 2,000 civilians have been killed, with airstrikes responsible for many of those deaths. Though today the Saudi embassy in London said all precautions had been taken and it was biased propaganda to suggest otherwise. It's recently emerged that in 2013, the UK traded votes with Saudi Arabia to help both countries onto the UN's Human Rights Council. The following year, this blogger, Rafe Badawi, was sentenced to 10 years in jail and a thousand lashes, the first of them caught on camera, for violating Islamic values and propagating liberal thought. Though further lashes have been postponed. Last week, another man, Dawood al Mahoun, saw his death sentence upheld. He now faces execution by beheading, even though he was just 17 when he joined anti-government protests. King Salman is head of a government which says it rejects any kind of interference in its internal affairs. Even if human rights groups want David Cameron to do just that and pick up the phone to the king about the al Nimr case. The fact that this teenage boy faces execution um, he hasn't had a fair trial. It's indicative. We've seen 134 executions, at least 134 this year already, and it's it's really shocking. It's truly awful, and this this shouldn't go ahead. King Salman has it within his power not to sign the death warrant, and uh, David Cameron could urge him to do so. So Ali Mohammed Al Nimr now on death row at the age of 20. His family begging their king to spare him and for the world to take notice. Well, with some difficulty, I did manage to get through to the father of Ali Mohammed al namir over a very poor internet connection. But I asked him if he was aware of what David Cameron had said about his son's plight. Yes, I heard that Cameron had spoken about my son's case. I see this as a positive step. Our two countries have a warm and friendly relationship, so I expect this will lead to a good outcome. I hope that Cameron's intervention will have a positive effect on the Saudi royal family.
When did you last see your son, Mr. Mohammed, and how was he when you saw him? I saw him two weeks ago, but only for 10 minutes. He was okay then and seemed resigned to his fate, but I'm very worried now because they've moved my son to a prison in Riyadh and he is in solitary confinement. I expect this can only mean bad news and I fear he could be executed at any moment. Well, we now hear that a second boy, Dawood al Mahoud, uh, who uh, was also only 17 when he was arrested, that he now also faces the death penalty. Yes, Dawood al Maroon also faces the same fate as my son, but so do six others. So in total, there are eight young men who have been sentenced to death. Uh, Mr. Mohammed, does your son have any regrets about what happened on that demonstration three years ago? My son is completely innocent. He has denied all accusations against him and said so in court. My son is a peaceful man. They forced him to sign a confession for a crime he never committed. Uh, Mr. Mohammed, if uh, the British Prime Minister, David Cameron, is watching this, what would you ask him? I want to thank Mr Cameron and the international community. I know we're all good friends, so I believe that all these calls for my son's release will be very welcome. Mr Cameron is a father too, so I know he understands what I'm going through. I'm so grateful to him and everyone else in the world who's campaigned on behalf of my son. I hope the matter can be resolved in a peaceful manner. Well, that was the father of Ali Mohammed Al Namir, and we hope to be speaking to Crispin Blunt, the um, chair of the House of Commons Foreign Affairs Committee. I've been getting away.